I should uh, I should put my earbuds in to test the audio. Hi everybody. Welcome to this English lesson about uh, shopping. We'll get started in about 33 seconds. Just give me a chance here to uh, to check everything to make sure that it is working. Hopefully, I did everything correctly. I think I did. Um let's see here. Oh, yeah. Sounds like everything's working. So, um I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a good day. Fridays are a good day for me. I get to start with an English lesson with all of you and then by the end of the day, it's the weekend. But anyways, let's uh let's get started in one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about shopping. Shopping is something that we all do. Uh, in order to live, in order to uh, go through your day, you have to buy things every once in a while. We need to buy food. We need to buy clothes. We need to buy houses if we live in houses. Um, We have to buy a car if we need to drive to work. So, shopping, the act of taking your money and exchanging that money for something is very, very common. These are usually very popular English lessons. Whenever I talk about shopping, people are quite interested. So, please enjoy this lesson about shopping where you'll learn lots of words and phrases that we use as English speakers when we go shopping. Before we get started, I do wanna mention there is a study pack for this lesson. If you go to bobthecanadian.com, you can find that study pack and there's also a link in the description below. That study pack has all of the original slides a crossword puzzle, a word search, a matching activity, a multiple choice activity. It has a lot of support materials that you can use as an independent English learner or if you're an English teacher, you can use them in your classroom. So, if you're interested, please head over to bobthecanadian.com and look for that. The other thing I want to mention is that I am so happy to see so many familiar faces. Welcome to all my members. Hello to Lolly Lolly and Tanya. And let me put my glasses on here. I see Hafiez is here. Freddie Wolf is here. I met Freddie Wolf on Zoom last week. It was awesome. Good to meet you. Wanda is here. Let's see when I scroll back. Ralph Key Park and a few more people. Peter, I'm going back even further. And hello to everyone else as well. Hello to Ruslan and Tung and Miriam and Unsel. Good to see you, Unsel. Uh, and Mohammed and Voladislav. Rolando Wright Winter is here. Good to see you. Uh, right, Winter says, I go shopping only when I need to buy something. Don't want to waste money. Yes, you sound like a very practical shopper. Hello to Shala and Emilio and Suhad and Emery and Dan and Tomic. Good to see all of you. I can't, of course, say hi to everybody, but uh, welcome. If you are new here, don't forget that there is a subscribe button and also please use the chat um, for nice English conversations between each other. You can comment on Bob's hair. You can talk about the slide that I'm talking about. You can even take notes. Some people like to type the word in the chat. We don't wanna do too much of that but it can be a fun place to interact with each other. If you have a question, there is a link in the description below. No, there's not. Bob didn't put the link there yet. There will be a link in the description below in just a moment. Give me one moment to put that link there. Uh, and please use the link to ask your question, okay? Um, when you use the link, it goes into a nice form and then I'm able to um oh, did I flip to the first slide by accident? Sorry. And then I'm able to um answer the questions nicely. But anyways, hello to everyone. Are we ready? Should we get the lesson started? Let's do that. So, the general term for someone who buys things is shopper. When you go to the mall, you will see lots of shoppers. Um when I go to the mall, I'm a shopper. So, a shopper is a person who is engaged in the act of shopping. So, if I take my wallet, I seem to have lost my wallet. Oh, it's over there and I go to a store and I buy something, I am a shopper. Um I'm similar to the person in the chat. I think it was right winter. I don't go to the mall without knowing what I want to buy. So, I'm a very focused shopper. I don't just wander around and buy things randomly but the person who buys things is a shopper. And there's two ways to talk about the act of shopping. We can say shop like just the verb to shop or to go shopping. 
So, I could say this. Tomorrow, I'm going to shop at the mall or tomorrow, I'm going to go shopping at the mall. Both sentences work. Both are completely correct and this is the verb we use to talk about buying things. So, if you go to the mall, you're going to the mall to shop or you're going to the mall to go shopping. We also sometimes say to do some shopping. I need to do some shopping this weekend. I need new shoes and a new pair of shorts. Now, there's a few different kinds of shopping and we just add the word in front to describe it. If I need food, I go grocery shopping. So, I go to the grocery store or supermarket and I go grocery shopping. I might say to Jen, I need to do a bit of grocery shopping after school today. Is there anything we need? If I need clothes, I would go clothes shopping. Jen and the kids really like going clothes shopping. I think everyone likes to have new clothes. So, we go clothes shopping. Not a lot but it's probably one of the more common things that we shop for. So, if you need food, you go food shopping or you go grocery shopping. Sorry, you go grocery shopping. If you need clothes, you go clothes shopping. If you need a car, you can actually go car shopping as well. So, car shopping uh, is something that you do when you need to buy a car. You might go to a couple of different places to look at the cars they have. We call those places car dealerships. So, you might go to three or four different car dealerships on a Saturday uh, to do some car shopping. You're going to figure out which car you want. You're going to decide which car you are going to buy. So, notice as well, shopping doesn't always involve actually buying something. So, I can go shopping at the mall and come home and say, I bought some shoes. I can also go shopping at the mall and come home and say, I didn't buy anything. So, both are equally um correct. So, I guess you don't technically have to buy something to be uh to go shopping. And then you can go house shopping. Um so, if you want to buy a house, you don't buy the first house you see. In Canada, you would call someone called a realtor and a realtor is someone who will take you and show you different houses. They will take you house shopping. And then you can see a few different houses. You can decide on what house you like and you can buy one that uh, you feel comfortable living in. So, very nice. Jen and I didn't ever do this. We didn't go house shopping because we bought our house from my mom. And then there's of course, online shopping. A relatively new kind of shopping. Online shopping is shopping that you do on your computer uh, or on your phone. Um so, you decide you need to buy concert tickets. You go on your phone and you buy concert tickets. Maybe you want to buy a new computer. So, you go on your phone and you do some online shopping and you buy a new computer. So, online shopping, another way to spend money to buy things. Now, I should have changed this picture. I should have found a picture with paper grocery bags. In Canada, when you buy groceries, when you buy food at the grocery store or supermarket, they now put them in paper bags or you need to bring your own bags. I always bring my own bags. We do not have gr- plastic grocery bags in my part of Ontario, Canada anymore. They're just not allowed. So, we decided that plastic bags are not allowed anymore. There are no plastic bags. So, I should have changed this picture to something a little more current. Now, if you go to the grocery store, if you need bags, they will give you paper bags and they will charge you 10 cents for each bag. So, you do have to pay for the bags now. We're doing it for the environment. Um plastic bags are not good for the environment. We also have shopping bags and there's less of these now too. People are more likely to just carry their items or people might get one bag at the first store they shop at, one shopping bag and then use that for the rest of their shopping trip. We'll do that sometimes. We'll buy something at a store at the mall and they'll give us a big shopping bag and then at each um each store we go to after that, we'll just keep putting the things in the first shopping bag because we don't need well, like this lady has too many shopping bags. That stuff could have all fit in one or two bags I think and I think that would have been a little bit better. Then, of course, we have price and you find the price on the price tag. So, the price is what the vendor or store or salesperson has decided 
they want to sell the item for. How much money they want for the item. So, if you look here, this kale is two dollars or three for five dollars. That's a pretty good price actually. Um you eat kale? It's quite healthy by the way. We grow kale in our garden along with the flowers um and then we usually let it uh freeze once or twice outside before we harvest it. But anyways, price is what you pay for an item and if it is a tag like if it's hanging like this, this is just the price written on a card or a piece of paper but this is an actual price tag. A little piece of paper hanging from the article of clothing or hanging from the thing that you want to buy telling you how much it costs. And then if you want to pay, you can pay with cash or money. Um we use the word cash a lot in my part of the world. So, Jen might say, um hey, do you can you pay for this? Do you have cash on you? And what she's saying is, do you have actual like bills in your wallet? Do you have five dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, fifty dollar bills? And I'll say, yeah, yeah, I have money. I brought money with me or I have cash. The other way to pay is of course with a gift card. So, a gift card is a card for a specific store and it basically has a certain amount of money on it. I actually have an Amazon gift card. I have one right here. I'm not gonna show you the back because if I think if you can see the code, you could steal it. So, this is an Amazon gift card. Hopefully, this focuses. And it says on the back, oh, $25. Well, that's not bad. Sometimes my kids give me Amazon gift cards. Um like they get them as a gift and then I order something from Amazon. I do some online shopping and then they give me the gift card to pay me back. You can also pay with a credit card or a debit card and these work slightly differently. A credit card basically, they send you a bill every month. A debit card takes the money straight from your bank account and gives it to the store. So, let me repeat. If you have a Visa card or a MasterCard, when you use that to pay by sliding it or tapping it or inserting it and punching in your code, you are actually, Visa is actually paying for your stuff and then Visa charges you interest and you have to pay them back. A debit card, the money simply comes straight out of your bank account. It's always better to pay with a debit card because then you're not borrowing money in order to buy something. Uh, hey, let's do some questions. I was gonna mention something. This is a repeat lesson from 2019. Some of you may have seen parts of this lesson before but it's been updated a little bit except for the grocery bag one. I should have updated that one. Uh, I do wanna say hi to a few people though. Uh let's see. Hi to Mr. Azaz. Hi to Mode Eggs is here. Good to see you, Mode Eggs. Hi to Sally in the chat. Let me get my glasses so I can see people's names better. Uh hi to Nor. Hi to Jose. Hi to Sophia. Vitor is here. Hi, Vitor. Good to see you. Uh Ibrahim. Good to see all of you here. And uh, I see a little bit of Francais in the chat. Very cool. Um it's fun when people are learning languages. I love it. Okay, let me see here. I have a few questions from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you today? I'm good. What do you like more? Online shopping or walking around a big modern shopping mall? So, it depends. Like online shopping is quick and easy and if there's free shipping and if what I'm buying is cheaper, I like online shopping. So, that's one of the things um about it. If though at the mall, sometimes they have really good sales and I like I don't know. I kind of like watching people. I don't know if there's a bug flying away. I like watching people. Like, I'm kind of a people watcher. Um so, the mall is exciting for me as well. I also like going to the food court to get some food at the mall. So, I think it depends. Sometimes, you go to the mall and they just have a really good deal. Like, buy two pairs of shoes, get one free or something and then it's fun uh to be part of the mall and be part of that. From Renata. Good morning, Bob. I have no question about today's topic. I just want to express my undying gratitude for the lesson and continued dedication. Have a great day, sir. Well, it's no problem. I I have I am thoroughly enjoying this still. I I don't know how to So, you know how there's things in life and you start doing them and after a few years, maybe it gets a little boring. I just don't have that with YouTube. I just really enjoy it. I like making the lessons. I like uh interacting with everyone. So, thank you Renata for the um 
gratitude but I am also grateful for everyone who is here watching. Lolly Lolly says, I love this topic especially clothes shopping. I am a fashion victim. Ha ha. So, fashion refers to wearing things that are new or fashionable or um cool or chic is another word. Um and you'll notice that I'm not uh, a victim of fashion. I wear the same shirts for years but for some people perhaps lolly lolly it's fun to buy new things and to um dress in style we usually say. From half yes, when salary comes out here we call it payday which happens twice a month mid and end of month. Usually a traffic jam everywhere during paydays wondering if the same over there. So, no. So, so many people get paid like it's all online now and paydays are quite different. Generally, most people get paid every other Friday. I get paid in the middle of the month and at the end of the month. Some people get paid every Friday. So, it kind of depends where you work um and we don't see this necessarily. Although, it can happen, right? It can happen that on certain days of the month if it all you know comes together that you'll see a lot of people shopping at once. I think people in North America are more driven by sales like Black Friday sales or Boxing Day sales after Christmas. Those really really get people out. Out and about and shopping. From New Words with MP. Hi, New Words with MP. When someone purchases a home, what kind of shopping is this? So, we would say that you are house shopping. Um you know, you could say they're looking for a house or they want to buy a house but when you go out and look at three or four houses in one day, we would say that you went out house shopping. Oh, we were out house shopping this morning. We looked at three different places. That would be a good example sentence. Uh test test says, hello, dear teacher. And then Vitor says, jeans and a black t- a black shirt. That's my fashion style. That is a great fashion style by the way. Ralph says, twice a month. We get money money at the end of the month. Yeah, Ralph, it depends where you work. Like, I get paid on like the middle and end of the month. My brother gets paid every Tuesday. My sister gets paid every other Friday. It's rare to get paid once a month in Canada. It's usually more frequent than that. Um let's see here. Tanya says, in Germany, we only get paid once a month. That's probably a very efficient way to do it, you know, to just do it once a month. Less paperwork for the accountant at your business. Uh let's see. From Hung. Hi, Bob. I usually pick my brother smart brother's brain for shopping. When you pick someone's brain, it means you ask them for ideas. Have you ever picked someone's brain for shopping? What do you usually buy? How did you feel afterwards? Thanks. Sometimes. If I need to buy someone a gift, it's sometimes nice to um find someone they know and ask them like pick their brain. Just say, oh, what should I get Joe for Christmas? I or what should I get Joe for his birthday? So, definitely great use of the phrase by the way. Mohammed, what is the difference between guru and teacher? So, teacher is a general term for someone who teaches. Then, a guru would be like a fun way to refer to someone who knows a lot about one subject. Winter Wright. Hi, Bob. Do you like going to flea markets? Do you need to bargain with the sellers in a flea market or wet market? Have a nice day. So, we don't have wet markets here. We do have flea markets and farmers markets but in Canada, you generally don't negotiate the price. The price you see on the price tag, the price you see listed is the price. At a flea market, you might be able to. At a farmers market, usually no. In our booth, if someone says, oh, bouquets are ten dollars each, I'll give you twenty five dollars for three. We just say no because someone will come and pay ten dollars for each of them. Um so, yes, at a flea market, maybe but at a farmer's market, usually not. By the way, next Tuesday's lesson is let's learn English at the farmer's market. It's a little bit short. It's only five minutes long but I made an English lesson yesterday at our market. So, you'll get to see the market in the next lesson. Let's see here. I'm going to skip questions that aren't on topic. So, I apologize if you submitted a question. If it's not about shopping, I'm going to skip it. Uh let's see here. This one I can relate though. Mr. Azaz says, hi, Bob. What's the meaning of this sentence? Everyone is up in arms about it. So, there's no the. This means people are upset. Let's say that a store said they were gonna open at eight and everything in the store was gonna be 50% off. 
and then they opened at nine and nothing was on sale. People would be up in arms about it. Sorry, you can't see that. People would be up in arms about it. It means that people are really, really upset or really, really annoyed about something. Uh let's see here. Hobart, morning teacher. What's the price of groceries in your country? Is so a little fix here. Is it getting expensive or cheap? It's getting expensive. In particular, things like milk, cheese, meat, all is very expensive. Fruit and vegetables are somewhat expensive. Um for me though, luckily, my son went to university and I'm trying to eat less. So, we haven't really noticed it. <laughs> so, we're feeding one less person and I'm eating a bit less to stay healthy. So, that uh, that makes it seem reasonable but it is still kind of pricey. Dan says, what amount of cash is allowed to pay when buying a car in a car dealership in Canada? Do the rules somehow differ from the USA? I don't know what the rules are in the USA but in Canada, money is money. If I went to the car dealership with fifty thousand dollars cash, I'm pretty sure they would let me buy a car. It's just not very common or wise. You shouldn't carry that much money around. That's a little bit that's a little bit crazy. Uh let's see here. From uh El Teacher Gonzalo. Hello, teacher. Do we do a shopping list or do we make a shopping list? You make a shopping list and I didn't put that in my slides. That would be a great thing to teach. A shopping list is a little list you make of the things you're going to buy on a piece of paper or on your phone. Thanks for that one. Um Hafia says, yes, things are getting expensive here too. Yes, definitely. So, again, a reminder from Mr. Azaz as well. Please keep the chat in English. Uh if you continue to chat in a different language, eventually, I will give you a little time out but the chat is a great place to practice your English. So, even if you need to use Google Translate, please only use English in the chat. It's a wonderful experience for everyone here. But hey, let's get back to the lesson. Should we do that? I'll have a sip of water. Oh, I was gonna do this. Whenever I had a sip of water, I would put my website. (laughs) This is my store. You can buy things there. You should go have a look. Okay, back to the lesson. Coupon. So, coupons aren't as common as they used to be. When I was a kid in the newspaper, there would be coupons that would say five dollars off. You know, if you buy twenty-five dollars worth of groceries, five dollars off and you would cut out the coupon and take it to the store. They've been mostly replaced with discount codes or at stores often they'll have yeah, they do still have coupons I guess but sometimes they the coupons are just on a like they just scan the coupon. I'm having trouble explaining this. Coupons are pieces of paper that help you get a deal or something cheaper at a store. So, there might be a coupon in a newspaper or on a in a flyer and it simply says 25% off. Bring this coupon to the store. Buy whatever you want. We'll give you 25% off. When you're buying things online, there often can be discount codes. If you punch this discount code in, you will get a certain percentage off or you can buy two things for the price of one with uh, a, a discount code. Um grocery store, supermarket. So, we use both words here in Canada. When you talk about the store that you go to to buy food, we would call it a grocery store or a supermarket. I often use the word grocery store. I think it might be very Canadian. I know en français on dit supermarché. In French, I think you say supermarché which is the French equivalent of supermarket. Um if someone says the word supermarket, I know what they mean. It's just not a word that I use very commonly. I often just say grocery store. Hey, I'm gonna go to the grocery store today. Um hey kids, I'm going to the grocery store after work. Is there anything you want me to buy? We also have malls which are that's the short form for shopping mall. A shopping mall is a large building with many, many stores inside. Shopping malls, by the way, are really nice places to go in the winter in Canada. When it's minus 20 degrees outside, it can be fun to just go to the shopping mall to do some shopping, to shop, to go shopping. Um even if you don't need to buy anything or want to buy anything because they're big enough that you can you can walk quite a bit. Like you can walk if you walked 
the entire gro- um shopping mall. It might be a whole kilometer of walking. So, I have in the past on really cold days if I wanna get uh some steps in for my fitness tracker, I might go with Jen to the mall and do some walking. But a mall sometimes has two floors or three floors. You can see here there's an escalator that people are going up and down. Um and a mall just has like a hundred or two hundred stores. It's a great place to go if you need to go to a variety of stores to buy things. You go to the shopping mall or what we just usually call the mall. So, some people ask sometimes what's the difference between a store and a shop? So, in North America, stores are generally bigger. When I use the word shop, I'm often talking about like a nice little store in a town. Um but that being said, it is interchangeable. You could say there's some really cute shops at the mall. There's some really cute stores at the mall. So, again, for me as a Canadian and I think in North America, store usually means something a bit bigger and a shop is something a little bit smaller. Um the street where the farmer's market is, there's a, there's some nice shops on that street. There's also some big stores on that street. So, it's not a hard and fast rule. Like, it's just kind of how Bob uses it but I wouldn't use the word shop to talk about a really, really big store that sells tools. I would call that a store, a hardware store actually. So, for me, store and shop have to do with size. I think in the UK, shop is a more common way to talk about stores. So, shopping cart. By the way, this is called a trolley I think in the UK. If you're learning British English, you're on the wrong channel but (laughs) that's okay. You can stay. We call this a shopping cart or a grocery cart or just a cart. So, when I go to the grocery store, I go and get a cart. I go get a grocery cart before I start shopping. Now, you are probably familiar though with the word shopping cart or the word cart because when you do online shopping, we still use this term. When you buy something on Amazon, it goes into your shopping cart. It goes into your cart. Uh, even though it's a virtual cart. Um but yes, I would call this a shopping cart. Again, if you are on the other side of the Atlantic, if you are in Britain, you would probably call this a trolley. I think that's what they call it. We just call it grocery cart. Seems simpler to me. When you go to a store, it's always fun when things are on sale or when the store has a sale. Let me use those two terms again. A store can have a sale. So, you might say, oh, that store is having a sale. A lot of stuff is on sale. So, notice I'm using it differently. The store has a sale. There is a sale at that store. The stuff in the store is on sale. Usually in Canada, all of the summer clothing is on sale in September. They know that it's hard to sell bathing suits and t-shirts in the winter and in the spring, a lot of the winter clothing is on sale. The store will have a sale and the winter clothes will be on sale in March and April because they would rather sell the the winter clothes instead of um keeping (laughs) keeping all the winter clothes through the summer. So, this has a lot of names but when you are at a store or shop, when you are done shopping, you need to pay for things. So, you need to find the till or the checkout or the register or the cash register or the counter or the front counter. We have a number of different words for it. The most common is probably checkout, okay? So, if I was buying, let's see here. If I was buying this pair of glasses, I would need to find the till or the checkout or the cash register or the front counter in order to pay for these. And the most common word would be checkout. And it's also the verb. Oh, I need to check out. I need to find the checkout so I can check out. Usually though, you would say I need to find the checkout so I can pay for all of this stuff. Um yeah, welcome to English. Sometimes there's lots of different words for things. Uh and then now we have, this is where the updated part of the lesson comes in. We have a lot more stores with self-checkout. This is becoming more and more common in Canada. Almost every grocery store that I go to now has self-checkout, okay? Self-checkout is when you walk up to one of these machines which we call the self-checkout machine or just the self-checkout and then you scan your items yourself. So, you go like beep and then you put it on the on the um on the little I think there's a scale 
I think these machines weigh everything and then the machine knows if you're lying or cheating. Um but self-checkout is becoming much more popular in Canada. Um we see it almost in every grocery store now. I I don't mind it. It's if you're in a hurry, it's kind of nice. And there's also stores. Now, I have not seen a store like this but I watched a video. Maybe these are more popular in Europe and other parts of the world where when you go grocery shopping, you get a cart and you get a scanner and as you shop, you scan the items with the scanner and then at the end, you you just pay and you're done. Like it's kind of a different way of doing self-checkout. Kind of similar though. If you have this in your country, let me know in the chat if you use scanners in your country. And then there's two kinds of people at a store. There's a cashier. This is the person who works at the checkout. The person who works at the till. And then we have a store clerk. This is someone who helps you in the store. So, if you are done shopping, you go to the checkout and the cashier will ring up. We still use that. I never thought about that. She'll ring up your total. There's no ringing anymore but she will scan each item and tell you how much money you need to pay. If though, I am in a clothing store or I'm in a grocery store and I can't find something, I might ask a store clerk. I might I might ask a clerk to help me find the bananas for instance. Hey, could you tell me where the bananas are? That's something I might say to a clerk. So, the cashier will check you out. The cashier will ring in or scan in all your items and then tell you how much you owe and the clerk will help you find things. Now, Jen and I talked about this one. We often just refer to a clerk as a worker. Like, If I'm in a store and if I have a question, I might say, have you seen a worker? Um if you see a store worker, let me know and I because I want to ask them something. But clerk is definitely the correct term for sure. Hey, we're gonna do members only chat. It's it's that time. Members only chat time. Let me get members only chat set up here. Members, there's the button. Hit save. Let me go to no display and have a sip. Members are people who support my channel. Yes, they have clicked the join button and they've decided to give me a little bit of money every month but they aren't just giving it to me. They get something in return. They get their name in green during a live stream. So, all of the people whose names are in green are members. They get a nice little lesson plan on Monday mornings. So, Monday mornings, there's a little lesson plan for the week It kind of gives you some ideas of what to do through the week. What you can study on your own. They get an extra video on Wednesdays. Wednesdays with Bob. I like making those videos by the way. Sometimes I make them on Monday though. So, it's not really Wednesdays with Bob. It's kind of Monday with Bob but it's on a Wednesday or Tuesday with Bob but on a Wednesday. But people seem to enjoy those as well. And you get a discount at the store. Um if you are a member and you don't know what I'm talking about, you should scroll back on the community page and look for the code. There's a discount code. Well, that's good for a shopping uh, for a shopping lesson, isn't it? Anyways, let me do thank you for being members. Let me do some questions from here and as the questions pop up down there, I will answer those as well. From Freddie, the French guy. Hi, Bob. No question today. Just to say that you can buy more than you expected because the stores often highlight their products to tempt you to buy. Merci pour tout. So, that's called impulse buying. And you'll notice at the grocery store, they have a lot of little things by the checkout that you have to walk by and look at. And sometimes there's gum or chocolate or things that you might want to buy. So, yes, Freddie, you're right. They when you go into the store, they they always want you to buy more. That's the way it goes. Okay, from the chat. Um let's see here. Omran says, Omran says, we have in Dubai a whole store without any employees. There is a self checkout only. That's awesome, Bob. Very cool. And then Key Park says, we have no scanner here. Freddie Wolf says, yes, we scan the products at the checkout. Ah, yes. And then Sophia, in the Netherlands, there are scanners at Jumbo and Albert Hein. I think they are very useful. Very cool. Natalia says, hello, Bob and everyone. Hi, Natalia. Good to see you. Vitor says, I like to go to the mall only to walk and see things. Usually, there are a lot of people and maybe you can find someone you know. It could be fun. The mall is a nice place to go. It's especially like I mentioned in the winter, it is nice to go to the mall. Uh, New Words of MP has gifted a membership. Very cool. And so, Jose has been given a membership by New Words with MP. Thank you, New Words with MP for doing that. 
Uh, let's see here. Amran says, thanks Bob for the amazing ideas. Always your lessons helpful for us. No problem. Wanda says, in Canada, is it common to buy things in installments? A refrigerator for example or clothes. This is common in Brazil. It used to be a long time ago when I was a kid, they had something called layaway where you could buy something in installments but that kind of disappeared when stores started to um give people credit cards. So, you can get a credit card from a store now believe it or not. Like you can go to a almost any store will if you fill out an application and you pass the credit check, they'll give you a credit card. So, credit cards kind of replaced that whole idea except for cars. You can still buy cars and then pay for the car for over four years or six years. You pay every month a certain amount but uh many things now it's it's usually just done on credit with a credit card. Uh let's see here. Need my glasses today. Let's see. Jose says, thanks a lot, Bob. No problem. Hafiez says, bought several houseplants recently. Several ficus plants. Ruby and Lirata. African violet, succulents and peperomia. Very cool. Ficus trees are cool. Lolly, is the French word boutique used only for clothes? Thanks, merci, Bob. No. A uh, boutique is used for any kind of store that's really nice. So, you can uh, go to a boutique and you can buy clothes. You can go to a boutique and buy high-end jewelry um and those kinds of things. But when we use the word boutique, it's something special, something really nice. Um key park. Some supermarkets have membership here such as Sam. We have that too. We have something called Costco. Uh Costco is a place where uh, you can go and you buy a membership and then you can buy food cheaper. Um Kaka says, I haven't used cash for numbers of years. Pay with e-wallet always. Yes, Jen and I mostly pay with our phones or I pay with my watch or I pay with a card. Rarely do I have cash on me. Pretty Wolf. Bob, in France, people would rather say the name of the brand of the supermarket or hypermarket. So, I will rather say I'm going to Carrefour or Leclerc or Auchan and so on. Oh, yes. We do that a little bit. So, the grocery store in our town is called Foodland. So, I might say I'm going to Foodland. It's a great name by the way, Foodland. (laughs) Um but cool, good to know. Omran has given me a super chat. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the support. Jose says, I'm from Brazil and scanners here just in the large city. So, it's starting there. So, eventually, you'll probably see them in more places. Uh Mr Azaz, what's the meaning of to blow off steam? That's simply to do something um Like if you're really annoyed, you might go blow off steam by running for a bit or something like that. That would be a good example. Mode says, hi, Mode. We can say that Vitor likes to go window shopping, right? Yes. So, window shopping can mean two things. Usually, it means you're going to look at stuff and not buy anything but if you go to a construction yard, you might actually be buying windows but normally, window shopping means to just shop without buying things. Shop Shopping just for the experience but not spending money. Hafia is every time I hear boutique, it's a high end store in my head. Yes, that would be the same thing here in Canada. Uh Lolly says, merci pour ta réponse. Thanks for your answer, Bob. Mode, is there any difference between a thrift store and a consignment store? Yes. So, a thrift store usually has things donated to them and then they sell them usually for charity or for a good cause. A consignment store is where if I had a really nice couch, I could bring it to a consignment store. They would sell it and then they would give me some money and keep some money. So, if I brought if I wanted to get rid of this couch, I could donate it. I could give it to a thrift store or I could bring it to a consignment store and then they would put it in their store and when it when it sold, we would split the money. Consignment stores aren't very common here anymore. Vitor, Sure, that's a great way to describe it. Yes, Mode says, yeah, Foodland sounds better than Canadian Tire. No Frills is a cool name too. Yeah, we have a number of interesting store names. No Frills, Food Basics. Those are the two really cheap grocery stores um and then Sobeys and Fortino's would be the more expensive grocery stores and Foodland's kind of in the middle somewhere. Hopefully, no one from Fortino's or Sobeys is watching. They might be annoyed. Uh, let's see here. 
Freddie Wolf, in Canada and Quebec, les personnes vont maganiser, oui, c'est ça, magasiner, magasiner, excusez-moi, à la place de faire des courses. That's a way you cross the border to the US to get cheaper groceries or vice versa. Some people do. That has slowed down quite a bit since the pandemic though. When the border was closed, people adopted new habits. So, it's it's less common now but people used to do that quite a bit, yes. Um, Yeshida says, Bob, can you do a lesson about the engine of a car? Someday. That's a pretty specific lesson though. We'll see. From Unsel. Hi, teacher Bob. Are you a conscious consumer? Do you advise your kids or students to be conscious consumers? Bye. Yes. Probably the thing I talk about most is if I see a student who comes to school with a coffee every day, I always say, you know, if you just made coffee at home, you would be saving $2 a day. You would be saving $40 a month. You would be saving a lot of money over a year. Notice I can't do the math that quickly. Um and then as well with our own kids, we usually really make them think through some of their bigger purchases and smaller ones. So, yes. By the way, a conscious consumer is someone who thinks through things before buying things. Like, make sure that they don't just buy things on a whim. Oh, and Mode says Bulk Barn. Yeah, Bulk Barn's cool. You can get a lot of really cheap chocolate at Bulk Barn. That's a great store. Everything's in big bins at Bulk Barn and you just scoop it out. Um, from Ario, sorry I'm late. I was watching your recent videos that you uploaded. My question is, have you ever paid VPN service that you can use it for streaming something? No, but I do use a VPN to check how things look on my YouTube channel and in my store from other countries. Um it's nice to be able to pretend I'm from France and look at my online store as if I'm in France to make sure it's working properly. Uh, Natalia, you said that on your farm there is no price negotiation. What about your friends and anyone you'd like to give a little discount to? Yes. Like we provided flowers for weddings of relatives and we do it at a very reduced cost. So, yes, we will for friends and family do small discounts sometimes but it depends. Um and then let's get back to the lesson after Colton. Hi, Bob. My boss let me buy gifts for all staff coming in the holiday. Could you give me some suggestions? No, I don't know what. Buy them something nice, Colton. It's that's a tough question because I don't know where you live and I don't know where you work and that might make a difference. Generally, at my place of work, we get gift cards as gifts. It's not very exciting but it's very useful. Okay, let's finish this lesson off. Let me have a sip of water. Hmm. I think I just spilled water but also I didn't turn off members only chat. Let me do that and let me answer a few questions from the members before I get back to the lesson. I see a few more popping up there. Let's see. Bulk barn. Jose says, here in Brazil, we have the fiera that you can buy things. Most fruits. This thing's still working. Yeah. Most fruits and vegetables on the street. Do you have the same kind of things in Canada? So, we have farmers markets. That might be the closest thing. And then Amaran says, the supermarkets here every Saturday and Sunday do discounts. A lot of things get on sale. Always people do purchasing at this time. Yeah, here that doesn't happen very much. Although, usually in the produce section where they have fruits and vegetables, you can find things that like bananas that are really yellow starting to turn brown. You can find those on sale. Receipt. So, a receipt is a piece of paper you get after you buy something. Some stores now send you a receipt via email but usually when I go to my grocery store when I'm done buying groceries, they give me a little piece of paper. It comes out of the cash register and they hand it to me and it tells me how much money I spent and it has a list of all the things that I buy. When I go to the grocery store and get groceries and also buy myself a chocolate bar, Sometimes Jen looks at the receipt later in the day and she says, you bought a chocolate bar? Did you get me one? (laughs) So, it's important to know what to do with your receipts. Also, when I buy something for our business, I keep the receipt because we want to enter the amount we spent into our accounting software. When you run a business, it's important to keep your receipts. So, if the government ever asked you what you spent, you would have proof of what you spent. And then you wanna keep it as well in case you wanna do a return or an exchange. If you buy flowers from us 
and if they die the next day which never happens. You should come back to market the next week and we will either give you a return. We will give you your money back or you can exchange it for a new bouquet of flowers. This happens quite regularly. I actually had a pair of shoes once and when I bought them, they didn't fit. I bought them online and they were the right size but they still felt really tight. So, I brought them to the actual store. The store sells online and they have a store and I returned them and they gave me my money back. I wanted to exchange them for one a pair that was a little bit bigger but they didn't have them. So, a return is when you bring it back and they give you money. An exchange is when you bring it back and they give you something else from the store. Shoes are a great example. If you buy size nine and a half and they don't fit, you might want to exchange them for size 10. And you should bring your receipt by the way. <laughs> if you don't have your receipt, you can't return or exchange stuff. Sometimes you just want a refund, okay? So, a refund is the name we give for when they give you money back. So, when you return something, they give you a refund. When you buy something, you give them money. When you return something, they give you a refund. They give you your money back. Sometimes customers get angry in a store and they want a refund. They demand a refund. Like, I want a refund. This is ridiculous. This shoe broke the first time I wore it. I'm never buying shoes here again. That's what an angry customer might say. When we talk about hours, we're talking about not just when the store is open during the day but what days they're open. So, if someone said to Jen and I, what are your hours? Actually, we don't have hours. Let me let me give a better example. If I went to the hardware store and I said to the store clerk, what are your hours? He would say, oh, we're open Monday through Saturday eight to six. So, you can see here opening hours Tuesday to Friday 7 30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, again, we use the word hours but it refers to the days and the time during those days that a store is open. Some stores are open 24 hours. There you go. Uh, we also have delivery and shipping. Let me kind of explain the difference here. Delivery is the act of bringing something to someone's house or apartment, okay? So, when you order pizza, it comes with free delivery. They bring it to your house. Um, the act of coming in your driveway, walking up to your door and giving you a pizza is delivery, okay? So, when you buy a mattress, sometimes you need delivery because the mattress doesn't fit in your car and so you need delivery. Shipping is similar. Shipping is when something leaves a store and the time from when it leaves your store to when it gets to your house. That's the shipping process and so, we kind of use these interchangeably though. They're very, very similar. In fact, sometimes you get free delivery. Sometimes you get free shipping and it means the same thing, okay? But generally, delivery is the act like when the person is at my house, he's making a delivery but when I pay for shipping, I'm paying for the item to leave the store, travel down the road and come to my house. I didn't explain that very well. They are kind of the same thing but there is kind of a slight difference. Maybe someone uh, in the chat can explain it a little bit better but sometimes something is too big and you need to pay for delivery or you need to pay for shipping. Sometimes you want to buy some clothes. Maybe you need to buy a new pair of pants. You need to buy a few shirts and you go to a clothing store to do some clothes shopping and uh, you want to try things on and so you would ask where are the fitting rooms or where are the change rooms? So, a fitting room is a small place like this where you can go and take your shirt off and put on the new shirt and see how it fits. Look in a mirror and see how it looks and then decide if you want to buy it or not. And then at the mall, sometimes you are hungry and so, malls have what are called food courts. So, a food court is a place where there are many restaurants and lots of tables and chairs to sit at And you can decide, oh, today I'd like a hamburger. Today I'd like a wrap. Today I'd like french fries with gravy. Today I'd like pizza. Today I'd like some samosas. Today I'd like an empanada. Today I'd like to have some pierogies. There's so many options at a food court. So, you kind of look and decide, hmm, what looks the best? What am I craving? When you crave something, it's what you wanna eat. 
and then you order it. Usually, when I go to the food court, I usually get pizza. <laughs> Sometimes, I get a hamburger. Uh and then a couple of terms to finish off here. In stock and out of stock. Let me make these a little bit bigger. When a store has something in stock, it means that they have that item. Okay. So, you can see here this cleaner is in stock. If you look at the shelf, you can see that there are bottles of cleaner there. Above though, there are no bottles. So, they are out of stock. So, when something is in stock, it means it's something the store sells and they have it in the store. When it's out of stock, it's something the store normally sells but they don't have any in the store at this time. So, when something goes on sale, the store sometimes has lots of that item in stock but sometimes something's on sale and then very quickly they're out of stock. They just don't have any anymore. It's disappointing when you go to a store to buy something that's on sale and they say, sorry, we're out of stock or we sold out this morning. That would be another way to put it. Uh and then you can of course ask for something called a rain check. That means when the product is back in stock, you can come and pay the price that you would have paid when it was on sale. Anyways, when something's in stock, it means they have it. When something's out of stock, it means they no longer have it. They have sold out. There are none left on the shelf. Hey, that is the end of the formal part of the lesson. I am gonna answer questions for about 10 minutes but uh do not leave. You might learn something new. Uh thank you to the 427 people who are watching though. Uh if you are new here, you should click that subscribe button. Let's get some questions on the screen and answer them. Let's see. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. (laughs) I'm surprised he's at my uh, my live stream. Hi, teacher Bob. I heard something about Holland. Some sexy workers stand in the show windows. How can we describe this kind of shopping or what verb? So, I don't know much if anything about that kind of shopping. You might need to ask someone from the Netherlands. I do know that in our malls, they will sometimes have live models wearing the clothes that they are selling. This happens sometimes at some of the higher end stores like J. Crew. I know they do that sometimes. I think what you're talking about is a little more scandalous possibly. So, I'm just gonna leave that question there and move on to the next one. From Dimitri. Hello, Mr. Bob. Have you ever received any prank presents? Like when you open a box and a cake is launched in your face. (laughs) Do you you want to experience this? Ha ha. No. So, we call these gag gifts. G-A-G. Gag gifts. And I have received gag gifts in the past. Um sometimes at Christmas at work, we'll exchange gifts but they're supposed to be funny. Um when I was a kid, I once got a gag gift. Um oh, what was it again? Yeah, I got a like a little doll. Um which was kind of strange. Uh it was kind of a weird gift but we were supposed to buy funny gifts and then my friend bought me a doll which I wasn't really that interested in. (laughs) So, um at work, I got a gag gift once but it actually ended up being good. I got a pack of six hockey pucks because the person didn't think I played hockey but I actually do play hockey sometimes. So, they thought it was a gag gift, a funny gift but it ended up being a nice gift. I really enjoyed them. So, Common, this is the last question and we'll wrap this up. Um Common says, are e-wallets popular in Canada? So, when we sell flowers at market, before the pandemic, most people paid with cash. Most people paid with money. Probably 80% of our sales were cash or people gave us actual money. Now, it's the opposite. Now, 80% of people, 70 or 80% of people pay with their phone So, people pay with their phone. They pay with their Apple Watch or their Fitbit. Um they pay with their cards but they tap the card. So, now you can tap the card on a machine and it beeps. So, we have a small machine to take all forms of payment um and it's far less cash. So, definitely things have changed here in Canada over the last four years uh and I and I do I do like it. It's just simpler to have it that way. Okay, here we go. No display. Website on the screen. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm gonna wrap this lesson up. I'm gonna head off to work in about five minutes. If you 
are interested in a study pack for this lesson, it's available right here and there's a link in the description below straight to the study pack. Have a look at that. You might enjoy it. Maybe not. If you're an English teacher, you certainly might enjoy it. It has all the original slides as a PDF and a PowerPoint. Crossword puzzle, word search, picture matching, matching, vocabulary sheet, a quiz. Um I'm losing track of what's all in there. Multiple choice. A bunch of things you can use or your class can use to practice this lesson. Remember, this lesson will come out uh in a shorter version uh in a couple days and that is a great thing to listen to uh one more time or two more times. Maybe watch it once more and then listen to it once after that. Repetition is an awesome way to improve your retention. Retention means to remember things. So, if you want to remember vocabulary, watch your English lessons more than once. Read things more than once. It's boring but it does work. I do wanna say one last thing. Thank you to my members. You guys are awesome. If you are interested in membership, when you click the join button, you can listen and watch a video that explains what you get as members and please consider it. Anyways, glasses on to say bye to everybody. Bye to Ulia, Sophia, Amran, Modags, Vitor, Key Park, uh, Anita, Jose, Emilio, Hafiez, Lolly Lolly, Natalia Illusion, uh, Irina, the only one. I think I'm repeating myself. If you wanna say bye, go ahead and say bye but we're wrapping this up. Au revoir, Freddie Wolf. Freddie says, thanks, Bob. Have a great Friday and great weekend as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Good to see you too. It was fun to see you last week, Freddie. It was fun to put a face to the name. Wanda says, bye, teacher Bob. Many thanks. No problem. Uh, Mo says, ah, look at that. The dumb bot gave a warning to itself. <laughs> oh, no. Did <laughs> you warn Nightbot? <laughs> there is another, um, there is another warn function now. Let me see if I can use it. I made a new one but it doesn't work as well. I gotta figure this out still. This one does multiple words, I think. See if uh, Nightbot responds there. Yeah, but then mode, if I do it like this, if I say warn, um, let's say I do you, then it does null, null, null because it, it doesn't, it doesn't do multiple words very well. I gotta dig into the programming and see what's going on. See, mode eggs, null, null. That's not an insult. It's not nul. En français, on dit nul. It's not, it's not that at all. Uh, Natalia says, have a nice weekend. You too. Um, Sean says, goodbye. Bye, Sean. Bye to James and uh, bye to everyone else. Dan says, thanks heaps, Bob. No problem. Um, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day. Uh, I'm going to uh, put the website store back on the screen for those of you that are interested. Um and uh, go have a look. You can also buy a private video from me. I did a few of those for people's English classes. That was a lot of fun. So, if you're an English teacher and you want me to say hi to your class, go have a look at that. It's all right there. I'm just gonna think through what I have to do today before I hit the end button. It's a pretty busy day. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching everybody.